Hi guys, welcome to this video looking at acid alkali titrations, where the main aim of the video is to figure out how to carry out an acid alkali titration and how to use that to prepare a pure dry salt of sodium chloride. Okay then, so what we want to be doing here is a titration experiment to find out how much acid it takes to neutralize 10 mil of our sodium hydroxide. So, first thing you need to do is get yourself a pet filler pet and measure out 10 mil of your sodium hydroxide. That goes into the conical flask down here. The next thing you want to do is fill up your burette with your hydrochloric acid. So it's on the, the bottom of the meniscus line is on zero. Then you want to take some indicator, in this case phenolphthalein, and you want to put a few drops so that your sodium hydroxide solution goes pink. You're then going to turn the tap on your burette and you're just going to let it go until it goes completely colourless. Keep stirring and you're looking for it to go completely colourless. Then you're going to stop the tap. That's gone at around 16.2 centimetres, 16.2 mil. Okay, so now that you've done that, the next step is to do the same experiment again. So put in your indicator solution, but this time you're going to go down to just below. So instead of going down to 16, I'm going to go down to about 14. So I'm going to go down to 30 on here. You do the same, you keep stirring, you keep stirring, you keep stirring, and then when you get down to 30, you're going to stop. And then you're going to add it in, drop by drop, until it goes completely colourless. Which happened there at 30.8. Now you've done that, you need to repeat it three times, which I've already done. And by doing that, you're getting three sets of concordant data, three bits of data that are really close up next to each other, and taking the average. That is the total amount of acid that is needed to neutralize our 10 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide. So to actually get your soluble salt through from this, what you need to do is redo that titration one more time. But this time, you don't put the indicator in to make sure it's pure. So what we do is we fill back up to the zero line and then we put in 14.5 centimeters cubed. So you turn the tap. You watch it very carefully. Slow it down when it gets to 14 and then do it drop by drop until you get to 14.5. So in here, now, I have my pure sodium chloride solution, my pure soluble salt. Okay, so your next step then is what we need to do is evaporated. So you're going to take your solution and you're going to tip it into an evaporating basin. You're then going to pop on a clay triangle into your tripod and light your function button. Place your evaporating basin on top and then begin to heat strongly. Now you're going to continue this until it starts to evaporate and then you're going to keep removing and putting the Bunsen burner back in to make sure you don't get any of the salt spitting. Bearing in mind we want to get as much of this salt as possible. Okay, what we're doing here is we are evaporating the water to leave us with our salt which we've just produced. By not using an indicator, we're making sure it's pure. By making sure that we've done the titration correctly, we're making sure that we've got no unreacted acid or alkali in there. So the more repeats you do, the more accurate that is. Now, for safety reasons, when you're heating this, it will start to spit. So if it starts to heat up too much, you remove the Bunsen burner, let it settle down again, and then continue. You want to go until you've got about a third of your solution left and then 
once it's at that you leave it on one side to cool the remaining water will evaporate off and that will leave you with your pure salt okay let's have a look at a few questions so question one says name a suitable indicator to use in a titration so think back through what we talked through think back through the one that we used before question two Describe how to produce a pure dry salt of lithium nitrate from lithium hydroxide, LiOH, and nitric acid, HNO3. It's a six marker, so talk through all the steps, what you need to do. Question three, explain why you should use a fresh sample without an indicator when preparing your salt. And then question four, explain one way to reduce risks during this investigation. Pause the video and have a go at the questions now. Okay, let's have a look at the answer to question one then. So this says, name a suitable indicator to use in a titration. There are two that you can use, phenolphthalein being the main one, and also methyl orange. You will not be allowed litmus solution or universal indicator solution. So the two key ones are phenolphthalein and methyl orange. Moving on to the big one then. Describe how to produce a pure dry salt of a lithium nitrate from lithium hydroxide and nitric acid, which are both aqueous. So the key thing here is that aqueous, so you need to use the titrations we've just been talking about. So measure out a certain volume of your lithium hydroxide with a pipette. Add it to the conical flask. So by saying how you're going to measure it out and what you're going to measure out gets you the first mark. The second mark, fill the burette. So it's that key word burette in there. To the bottom of the meniscus line, so that's on zero. And then you want to add your phenolphthalein or your methyl orange indicator. So mark number one, measure out your lithium hydroxide. Mark number two, fill the burette with your nitric acid. Make sure it's on the bottom of the meniscus line. That's making sure you've got your accuracy, so making sure that's on zero. And then adding your indicator in, so phenolphthalein or methyl orange. The next thing is to slowly add the acid to the alkali until the phenolphthalein turns from pink to colorless or the methyl orange turns from yellow to orange. Either of those gets you the next mark. Repeat this until you have concordant data. If you can't remember concordant, three sets of similar results will do. Take an average and repeat without the indicator to produce your pure salt. Once you've done, evaporate the solution and leave it on one side or in a desiccator to dry. So there's lots of ways you could have got the six marks here. The key things are adding them together using a pipette and burette and then evaporating and leaving it to dry. Those are your key things and learning the names of the indicators. On to question three which says explain why you should use a fresh sample without an indicator when preparing your salt. It's all about purity. So the salt would not be pure if you had an indicator in there. We'll get you your answer. Or you could say the reverse argument saying the salt would contain the indicator making it impure. Final question then. Explain one way to reduce risk during the investigation. So there are a couple of things you could have put. Acids and alkalis can be irritants which will get you one mark. Wear goggles or wash it off if it gets on your hands would be the second. And then the other thing you could have said was the salt can spit when you're evaporating it off, causing burns. And the thing to do about it is to keep removing the Bunsen burner to stop it from spitting. That pretty much brings this video to an end. There is a review question which says, plan an investigation to produce a pure dry salt of potassium chloride from potassium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, which are both aqueous solutions. In your plan, you should include the equipment needed, a step-by-step -step method to produce that pure dry solid of potassium chloride, and what the hazards are and how you should minimize them. That brings this video to an end. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click on subscribe down below, and you can also find out more information on my website, mrbarnstc.com, and Facebook and Twitter.